Hello again, everyone. My name is Miss Shannon. I'm so glad you're back with me to keep exploring this fantastic book called Sun, One in a Billion. This book is unique because the author, Stacy McAnulty, included elements of both informational and fiction to make it more interesting. So in this book, we're learning facts about the sun in really fun ways. Last time, we learned several multiple meaning words and phrases, which are words that have more than one definition, and we practiced using them correctly. It's always great to learn new words so that when we hear or read them, we can understand what's going on. We can also use them when we write or speak to others. Oh look, here comes the sun to join us again. Last time, we created this chart to help us see that some words and phrases have literal and figurative meanings. Let's use it to review the three multiple meaning words and phrases we discovered in the first part of the book. We learned star, hang out, and revolve. Remember that a star can be a literal ball of light and gas in outer space, or figuratively, an entertainer, performer. Hanging out can literally mean something sticking out of something else, or it can figuratively mean spending time with the same people or in the same place. Finally, we learned that revolve literally means to move in a circle around something, and figuratively means that something or someone is the most important. Now that we've done a quick review of figurative and literal word meanings, let's continue our chart challenge with the rest of the book. Today we're going to continue finding more multiple meaning words and phrases to add, and this time we're going to think more about how to determine what they mean. Remember that some strategies we can use to determine word meanings include using the words and pictures together, looking for antonyms, and checking a dictionary. Remember these strategies so that when you're reading on your own, you can figure out word meanings in any text. Are you ready to continue our chart challenge from last time? Yes! Let's get started, word detectives. Watch me read this page and add the next word to the chart to remind you how to find and understand multiple meaning words. Then you can help me with the rest. But you can't fill me with earths because I'm hot stuff. Compare, a hot summer day, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, a pizza oven, 700 degrees Fahrenheit, the orange yellow flames in a campfire, about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Me, about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface. I can melt diamonds. Me at my center, 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. It says the sun is hot stuff. This phrase has two meanings. How can we figure out what they are? The literal meaning is easier to find. We can use the words and pictures together to see that the sun is much hotter than a summer day, a pizza oven, and a fire. So hot stuff literally means having an incredibly high temperature. The figurative meaning is a little trickier to figure out, but we can use the same strategy, using the words and pictures together to think it through. If we consider the book as a whole, we've seen over and over again on many pages that the sun is very proud of itself and knows it's extremely important. Like here, where it says directly that it is the most important. And here, where it says it's outstandingly talented and popular. This evidence helps us determine the figurative meaning of hot stuff, someone incredibly fabulous that others want to be around. So, the sun is literally made out of hot stuff with a very high temperature that can burn you. And the sun is figurative hot stuff in this book because it's so loved, adored, and celebrated. We can confirm this by checking a dictionary. When I look up hot stuff, it says, used to refer to a person or thing of outstanding quality, interest, or talent. So that matches what we figured out from the text by reading all around the word. 
When's the last time you saw something that was literally hot stuff? This morning, I had some coffee and that was definitely hot stuff. Let's check in with our dogs, Spot and Muffin from last time. Remember how Spot thinks that the world revolves around him? That could also mean that he thinks that figuratively, he's hot stuff. How might Spot act since he thinks he's hot stuff? Right, he might walk like this. Now it's your turn, word detectives. Read this page with me. And as we read, try to find a multiple meaning word. Not to hog the spotlight, but I've still got it. I'm the same hot, bright star I've always been. Did you find one? I noticed the multiple meaning word hog. When you hear the word hog, what do you think of? I bet some of you thought of this. Is that the literal or figurative meaning of hog? Yes, that's the literal meaning of the word hog, a pig. But it also has a figurative meaning, and the author uses hog figuratively in her book. Which strategy should we try to figure out its meaning? Let's try to use the text and pictures together to figure it out. I'm noticing that the sun is the only one on stage, so it's getting all the attention and it says it's hogging the spotlight. No one else is in it. So when you figuratively hog something, it means you're taking most or all of it and not leaving much for others. Let's use a dictionary again to double check this. When I look up hog, I see two definitions. The first literal one says, a domesticated pig. And the second figurative one says, keep or use all of something for oneself in an unfair or selfish way. So that matches what we figured out. Look up there at Spot, he's hogging all the food. Poor Muffin. Let's think of things we might want to hog or get a lot of. Maybe our favorite foods or something else we really like. I might want to hog the TV and watch only things that I want to, but I would need to be considerate and give others a turn. Spot, quit hogging that food and give some to Muffin. Good dog. What's something you would probably not want to hog because it's something you don't like very much or it's not good to be around? I would probably not hog someone's pet kitten even though kittens are cute because I'm allergic to cats. They make me sneeze. Look, word detectives, we've added two more words to our chart. You're doing a great job with this challenge. Now we found lots of multiple meaning words and phrases with figurative and literal meanings. Let's keep going. Read this page with me and look for the multiple meaning word. A stable star is a good star. You don't want your sun getting hotter or cooling off. That would be really messy. Did you find it? Yes, stable has two meanings. This one is a little different than the other multiple meaning words we found because it doesn't have a figurative and a literal meaning. Instead, the two meanings of this word are just different parts of speech. One is a noun, which is a person, place, or thing, and one is an adjective, which is a describing word. We'll explore Stable's two meanings more in just a minute, but notice how this part of the chart is organized a little differently for multiple meaning words that can be used as different parts of speech. So, word detectives, which strategy should we try to figure out Stable's meaning in this book? Let's see if we can use antonyms. It tells us Stable is good because we don't want it getting hotter or cooler, so that means we don't want it to change much. From that, we can figure out that Stable means not changing. The sun's temperature is pretty stable because it doesn't get much hotter or colder. So here, Stable is an adjective because it's describing the sun. Something else I can think of that is stable or doesn't change much is the color of my eyes. That's not really changing, so my brown eye color is stable. 
Since we've been thinking about antonyms, can you think of something that is unstable, meaning it changes a lot? Something I thought of that's unstable is the shape of a balloon when you're blowing it up. It starts small, but it keeps changing by getting bigger. That size was pretty unstable because it kept changing. So now we know one meaning, but how can we figure out the other one? I think we're gonna have to use the dictionary since using the text will only teach us about the meaning we already found. When I look up stable, it says the adjective meaning is firmly fixed for the first definition that we already figured out. So now we've double checked that, which is great. And for the second definition, it's a noun that means a building for animals, such as horses and cattle. So the other thing that stable can mean is a place where an animal lives. What else might you expect to find in a stable along with a horse? Yes, maybe some food, water, a brush for its tail, or anything else that a horse might need. Great job finding so many multiple meaning words for our chart, word detectives. You really rose to the challenge. Okay. Time for a review game to help us remember the multiple meaning words and phrases we learned today. Is fire literal or figurative hot stuff? Yes, fire is literal hot stuff because it's so hot it can burn you. Figurative hot stuff is something that lots of people really like. So something really cold like ice cream could actually be considered hot stuff if a ton of people love it. Which kind of hog might you find in a stable? This kind, which is the animal, or this kind, which is a person taking all the toys. Yes, you'd find an animal in a stable. And speaking of stable, which hog above is stable? Yes, the hog that is still and not changing is stable, and the one that keeps falling down is not stable because its position keeps changing. We did it, word detectives. We found multiple meaning words in the book, placed them on our chart, and used strategies to figure out what they mean. Remember that some words and phrases can have both literal and figurative meanings. Also remember that some words can be different parts of speech, which changes what they mean. When you're reading, writing, and listening to words, see how many multiple meaning words and phrases you can find. Remember to use strategies like checking a dictionary, using the words and pictures together, and looking for antonyms to figure out what words mean. You can use these strategies with any book, not just this one. See you again soon.